So in the introduction video, I told you that I would be trying to explain some things that other people didn't explain. And in my opinion, this is one of them, is how to choose an appropriate uh, water pump for your system. How big does it need to be? What's the deal with water pumps? Where do you get them? All that kind of stuff. When I was doing research for my home aquaponics system, I had a lot of trouble finding the detailed information that I needed to make a good decision about which water pump to get. So uh, there's kind of two considerations. One is you want to look at the electronic specs for your water pump. Uh, basically what you're looking for is the wattage. How many watts does it use? You want to get a water pump that does the job with using the minimum the smallest amount of watts, electric watts, that you can find. Um, the lower the watts, the less money it's going to cost on your electricity bill. Because your water pump, um, in most cases, unless you're on a timer, but in the system I'm doing, your water pump's going to be running 24-7. So it's really important to get the smallest wattage that you can. So you're using the least amount of electricity, good for the environment, good for your pocketbook, so you're not paying a bunch of money to the electric company. So minimize the wattage, smallest wattage pump that does the job. And also you got to consider how much the pump costs to buy. Um, but your other consideration is how much water can you pump through the pump. Um, one kind of rule of thumb that you can go with is that if you have, like I do, a 100 liter um, setup, you want to be able to pump 100 liters per hour. Okay, But when you get into the details of water pumps, you start looking at mm, what is 100 liters per hour? Well, the amount of water that can get pumped through a water pump changes for a lot of factors. The horizontal length of how far does the pump have to go? How much uh, hose do you have? How much horizontal length? The longer your hose is, the less uh, powerful your pump is going to be. Also, even more so, the vertical height, how far does the water have to get pumped up? That really reduces the um, pumping capacity of your pump. So, you need to look for hopefully your pump company, if you can check them out on the internet, uh, will have a graph. The pump that I bought has a graph, which I'll show you in just a second, which shows uh, the maximum head, which is how high it can pump. And then it shows you at a graph of how many liters per time, per minute or per hour, how many liters per time um, at different lengths and different heights uh, will it, the pump be able to produce or pump. Okay, so here is my water pump. This is the pump I decided on. I bought it over the internet after doing some research. Um, it's called Active Aqua. That's the company's name. And uh, it's a submersible pump. Uh, you need to make sure that your water pump is going to be okay with submersible because it's going to be underwater, pumping from underwater. Um, you also need to make sure that it's rated for pumping water and not some other fluids. Okay, Active Aqua Company, submersible pump 250. Um, supposedly it can pump 250 gallons per hour. Now I got 100 liters of water in my setup. 100 liters is about 30 gallons, so obviously this is overkill. However, if we look at the manual, we've got a graph here. Here is the 250. Okay, That's my model. It's this gray line here. So you can see the maximum head, the height, maximum height that can go is about six feet. Once you reach six feet in height, pumping the water up six feet, that's where the pump ceases to work. 
So if you have to pump the water up six feet, you're basically not going to get any water. If you go down to five and a half feet, you're going to get a trickle of water. If you go down to four feet, you're going to get about, mm, let's see, about 30, 40 gallons per hour. Now that's okay for me, as my setup, I need to pump up about three feet. So with this pump, pumping up three feet, I'm going to get somewhere in the, let's see, about 60, 60 gallons per hour. Now I only need to pump 30 gallons per hour because I have a 30 gallon setup, 100 liters. So it's better to have too much. You need to have a pump that can overdo it a little bit. Okay? Um, and basically with your pump, if your pump is a little bit too strong, you can always use some kind of a valve to slow down the water flow or you can divert the extra water and uh, help aerate your fish tank or something. But make sure your pump is more than capable of doing the job. You don't want to go overboard and get a humongous pump and then you're running too many watts and you're using up a tons of electricity. But you want to get a pump that's good enough, that's, you know, definitely strong enough to handle what you need to do with leftover power to spare. Okay, so here's my water pump. Okay, basically the water gets sucked in through these little grates and there's kind of a propeller type fan which essentially blows the water up and out this top fitting. So this top fitting is has screw threads. Not sure if you can see that. And it comes with some different fittings. They screw into the top. like that and uh, there's a couple different fittings you can see this one and this one for a skinnier hose or a fatter hose you have some kind of hose coming and that's where the water pumps too so these different fittings were nice for different size hoses um, <clears throat> one really cool aspect of this pump which I hopefully can utilize but I don't have my plans fully down yet is uh, it comes with an attachment here that has a Venturi. Venturis are awesome. It's a way to help aerate your water without using any aerator pumps or any electricity. Just a natural plumbing method of uh, increasing the air intake or the oxygen intake into your water. Basically as the water goes through the pipe it pulls air in through this air hose and so it mixes a little bit of air in with the water the venturis are really cool things um, I'm going to cover those in a later date once my setup is more uh, finished so most water pumps have some sort of a way to regulate the water output that they can do and with my pump whoop, there we go. This is one of them. Okay, Water gets sucked in through here because of a, a fan. Propeller blades are pulling the water in and pushing it up. But I've got this guy here and by twisting here you can close the gate. Close the door. So obviously if the door is open more water can get pulled through. But if you need to lessen the amount of water you just close this then it the, wa the water is only getting pulled through here when the door is closed so that's handy feature also that is good to have on a water pump so let's take it apart this is the actual pump inside here not sure if you can see that's where the propeller blades spin to pull the water through it's got some suction cups so you can stick it to the bottom or the side or of your tank or whatever. Then you got here, this is your filter material. It's kind of some spaghetti foam so that uh, none of your big fish solids 
are going to get stuck inside the propeller fan blades. So, um, you know, I don't know, once a week or something, we're going to have to clean this out. It's going to get gunked up with fish poo. And that's it. All the parts and aspects of a water pump.